Season 15, Episode 5. Last time on Races to Places, I stood under a huge waterfall. As normal, let's open the episode with an Icelandic fact. Did you know Icelanders work some of the longest hours in Europe? On average, they work over 45 hours a week. Hopefully they still find some time for Netflix and races to places. (laughs) As the day was drawing to a close, I decided I was going to treat myself to a hostel. Last night I stayed at a little hostel just here and uh, they have their own little uh, hydroelectric plant runs down here through this pipe into this little hut. The owner. <laughs> oh wow. So this is the little hydro plant. Yeah, it's a hydro tool pipe. Wow. And this, in this generates enough electricity to keep the farm and the hostel going. Yeah. Wow, should, that's should incredible. Be, then we should be fully self-sufficient here. That's incredible. Nice. Uh, the water, water will come down this pipe here. Yeah. And into this turn here. Yeah. And then there's a hydro turbine wheel. Yeah. High pressure. Mm-hmm. And this is like a needle that controls how much we can ah, take the, the mountain. Okay, yeah. So depending on the sensor up in the mountain, we can open or close this. Yeah. It goes completely automatic. Wow, it's so cool that you are self-sufficient here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, we can remote into this. Yeah. And when you when you overproduce, they buy it back off you, yeah? Yeah, then we can sell it to the grid. <laughs> if you stay in a hostel and there's like three or four, five, six people in a room, it's really important to respect the other people. So last night there was a guy, his alarm clock went off, and then he snoozed it, went off again, and then it was playing. Um, just be really thoughtful about the other people that are in the hostel room. They're also doing things on the cheap. They also want a good night's sleep. So just be mindful that there's other people. You'd think, however, after enduring my dad's snoring on previous trips, some simple hostel discomforts would be like water off a duck's back. Should have worn my earplugs. <laughs> remind me so much of places like New Zealand, South Island and uh, up in Alaska. It's really funny how the style is very similar in these cold places in the world. Hi everyone, can you believe that it's 10 years since I started making videos on my YouTube channel? I'd like to thank you all for following along and for all the comments you make in the comments section below each video. I love reading them. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button and more importantly the bell icon so you get instant notifications when I release a new video. More so however, if you want to see priority viewing of my video episodes, podcasts and even special features, you can do so over on patreon.com slash linden Posket. You can check it out at the link in the top right corner. Thanks again and enjoy this video. So 
So this is that road where the this local guy just bulldozed his way through with a small excavator. Check it out. So this is the part that uh, the guy just bulldozed his way through. You can see the overhang there. And when it's low tide, you can ride through here. Actually, now I think this time of year, it's probably exposed to the road the whole time, but see on the safe side, came through at low tide. But yeah, what a story. And what a place. Well guys, unlike the boat that I saw the other day that I thought was a shipwreck that then I couldn't find any information out online about, this one is actually a real shipwreck. This boat, the Gada, was built in 1912, 110 years ago, and it rested its sorry self here ashore in 1981. So a good 70 years of service was had. But this is the oldest steel ship known in Iceland. So there's a fact for you. Oldest steel ship in Iceland. Gada, grounded here, 1981. some pretty epic camping spots on races to places around the world but this one has to be in the top five I won't forget it in a hurry that's for sure what a campsite Woo -hoo. it's 11 p.m. and I'm just sat on the most westerly point of Iceland watching the Sun go down I mean look at the view and I just can't explain how calming and soothing this evening is. Um, sometimes the, my trips get super hectic. I mean, a few days ago I was riding in torrential rain, freezing cold temperatures, and trying to battle my way through snow drifts. I have to have a little laugh to myself because uh, I never expected to be sat here doing this, to be honest. Uh, I chose to come here late at night to try and avoid as many of the tourists as possible and it worked perfectly. Um... Packing my tent away, thoughts are running through my head about the route plan for the day. I do love a good plan, but in general, I make it up on the fly. While doing some simple tasks such as packing the tent away, I often feel very grateful for the surroundings that I'm in. It's pretty humbling. So, just a little fun bit of info here. This is the same Big Agnes Copper Spur 2 tent that I used on Races to Places. And when I got it out of the bag for the first time, uh, it's been sat in Basil's bike, Basil Bike's luggage for three years with COVID and everything. But the elastic is now not elastic, it's just like a string. So the elastic that was there to help you assemble the poles now is a string so I've had to put a loop on it and you have to pull it to assemble the poles. Just a fun little fact about a very aging tent, must be like eight years old or something now. But it's still smashing out these trips. I still haven't had the spanners out on this trip yet so I thought I'd give Norman a bit of maintenance.
In Iceland, there's water crossings everywhere. Some of them shallow, some of them deep. Some of them with slow flowing water, some of them with fast flowing water. And every single one is different. As a general rule, when I approach a water crossing, I ride slowly and take a quick look. If I can see the bottom and it's relatively shallow and I know this bottom is smooth, then I will take a ride through it and give it a go. If I can't see the bottom or I'm at all unsure, I'd rather get off the bike and take a walk first, because if it's hard to walk through or it's too deep or it's fast flowing and it's difficult to stand up, then there's a pretty good chance it's not going to be successful on my bike. Travelling alone it's extremely important to take care of yourself and your motorcycle and if there's any doubt don't be afraid to just turn around and take a different way. It's not necessary to take unnecessary risks. recording on the drone so let's go make it happen we got the helmet camera on as well it's a long crossing so probably about 50 meters or something sink or swim as they say Iceland has delivered stunning scenery every single day it's also delivered some epic snow crossings Let's hope Norman and myself can blitz this one. Teamwork makes the dream work. So close. Okay, so we're just gonna lay it down, pull it onto some fresh snow, lift it up again, and see if we can get through. I'd say we've done pretty well there, Norman. That's a serious incline. You always hear people these days talking about getting their daily steps in. Well, thankfully, I always get mine in by walking back and forth, setting up and collecting my camera equipment. You see, when you have to film stuff, you have to set the cameras up, do it, and then go get the cameras. Well, when it's through a snow drift, you don't want to go on the bike to get the cameras, so a bit of hiking involved. But it's a beautiful day and the scenery is incredible. So what could be worse? Try to save some battery. Yes, we need it again. Come on. Come home. Come back. This is a proper trail. Oh. 
that's going to be tough on the big bike. Well, on any bike. No motorcycle has been here yet. Only a quad bike by the look of it. Next time on Races to Places. You might notice I'm sounding a little bit bunged up this morning. I've got cold or something. <laughs>